What is up guys, Greedy Knight here with a breakdown of every Charge Blade matchup in Sunbreak Title Update 1. I'll go over the playstyles and attacks to look out for in each matchup. This video will be a bit longer than my normal video, so let's just get into it. All relevant information will be linked down below. Spinning Axe and Super Spam are the two main playstyles, but each playstyle is effective against a given monster based on its mobility, hit zone spread, and body size. In context to the video, the term guard includes the squad of guard, guard point, counter peak, and ready stance with the guard up works. Feel free to comment anything you have questions on in context to the video or on the spreadsheets. For Royal Ludroth, targeted spongy main to dump 400 damage per file. Breaking the main at least causes a trip, if not a flinch, giving a free window of damage. The only thing to worry about is when it charges around or does a barrel roll, which can be solved by guarding or avoiding it entirely. Kezu's entire body is a viable target for your files. Between the reactable roars and electroshocks, Counterpeak will keep you topped up on files and keep up the temperature as you dump those supers. You need to guard up to block the electroshocks. For Almadron, targeting its tail and the mud bomb will be the go-to strategy, especially when it gets tripped. The head and back will be your secondary targets. Turtle behind your shield if you aren't familiar with the tricky Mudcat's tail swipes and claw slams, otherwise guard point and counter peak in response to its moveset. It will do a lengthy windup before popping the mud bomb, so guard the explosion if you can't defuse it in time. Camellio smelts the fire. Few of its moves enable optimal counter peak gameplay, so generate your files yourself with sword and shield combos. Use Axe Hopper to aim for the head, but Fire Files can hit any part of the body for solid damage. The Poison Attacks can all be blocked without any problems, no longer affecting you once blocked. The Double Body Slam gives you a free window to super. Lastly, bring your Anti-Poison items, if not the Poison Resistance skill, just in case. Great Baggy is one of those matchups where Impact Bell will keep the Sleep Raptor down while you break the head. A very basic matchup. Just avoid the sleep spit until you snap its horn and dodge the body check. Super spam is bad here because the body check causes Baggy to do a 180. Arzeros and its apex forces you to learn the swivel guard which is angling your guard in response to the multi swipes. Don't bother using a guard point super because these dumb bears consistently move out of range of a good angle. Guard the command grab swipes and the charges. Your elemental targets are the arms on both Arzeros with its butt being the primary target for cutting. You only slash and bash the head for a stun window. The Gombi is just a sliding Arzeros with similar hit zones. Target the rump for damage and noggin for the stun window. Guard the sides and the spin out move. Bring a Nullberry to cancel the ice blight from incoming snowballs. For Baryoth, break its thorns and teeth to knock it down. Afterwards, just focus the head. The wind tornadoes obscure your vision so you do need to predict attacks through blurred visibility or cart trying. The safe place is just guard through it. Morphing advance will keep you close to Baryoth during the hunt as it darts around. The tail slam combo does cart so guard until the tail comes down and do not release ZR anytime sooner. Frosty Canth is hard mode Somnicanth. Most ice attacks blight you and it's a combo maniac. Ready Stance enables you to bulldoze through its shenanigans and keep up the temp with your flaming buzzsaw. Grab an additional wire bug for Ready Stance insurance. Focus the head fin to output high damage and gain the KO. Guard negates all frost attacks and serves as a safety net should Ready Stance fail. Goss Rag is a frostbitten Arzeros, begging you to slash and bash the arms, no matter the state they are in. Don't recklessly burn your ready stances since they counter each blade and ice club strike. The most dangerous moves are the X slash and the blade slam. Morphing advance should move you out of range, otherwise just guard it. Luna Garan starts off somewhat weak to fire but dons heat conductive armor during the course of the hunt. All of the frosty parts become good hit zones, breaking enough of them causes the wolf to revert to its base form. Accompanied by a trip. The howl into slash combo is telegraphed to a fault but guard it just to be safe. For fire, Gormagala is only weak on the head. When the antennae pop out, you are rewarded with extra damage for skull slashing and bashing. Avoid the many shades of plague nukes with morphing advance or guards, lest we risk the virus. Do the same for the charges and slams. Anjanath's entire body sizzles from a splash of water. 
Otherwise, sweep the leg for a 40 hit zone and 45 when it gets in flame. Breaking its nose will cause a dramatic trip, also removing its ability to enter flame sicko mode. Hitting the throat with enough damage will also trip it and knock it out of its enhanced state so you can break its nose with an axe chop as it flails about. The mouth stab, the body checks, and the fire breath are the only threatening moves which are solved by guarding. Pyrokodaki is a much more element friendly monster compared to its base form. The flame threads have a 20 hit zone value for water which is the baseline for good elemental damage and it has a large surface area for easy super spam access. Once the webs are down, the next target is the cocooned abdomen, which procs Elemembane for extra damage. Though fire wires can be guarded, but paired with the main body explosion, it can hit through counterpeak if you stand too close to both hitboxes. Bangwajon is just Fire Almajon. It requires the same moveset and matchup knowledge as the base, just add in lava. It steals the Agnector mechanic of magma armor, enabling hit zone weakness on every glowing spot while only the head and tails are consistent weak spots. Break the lava bomb to gain the trip, or guard it if you can't. Silver Rathos has its wings and legs as the main hit zones in its base state, while the head becomes the main target during its Azula mode. Aim for the break to gain those weakened hit zone benefits after it reverts back to base, otherwise the head will remain resilient to cutting and file damage. You can guard the fire rock explosions, especially with the maxed out Spearbird for the OG quest, but it's still just Rathlos. Kuliyaku is one of the greats, just add a rock mechanic. The formal rock is a terrible hit zone while the pot is a free hit zone. Breaking both will create an opening. Focus the head while dodging its Yoshi Somps and rock attacks. Volvodon is an annoying matchup. Dodge and guard the paralysis at all costs, break its back by aiming for the brick rack. The free window of damage is a fart attack after a ready stance or counter peek. You can try to interrupt it while it's rolling around, causing a knockdown, but it's always just safer to wait for it to stop moving. Aknasom's plume does not take any water damage, but instead is weak to thunder. Otherwise, water hits harder on every other hit zone, which is why I placed this in water CSS instead of what would normally be a good super spam matchup. Focus the head and legs while avoiding its double wing swipes, the spear charge, and the backflip. Bob doesn't like getting slashed or splashed on the head and tail, which should be your only targeted hit zones. It has the same patterns as base Bishatan, but toss in a flame breath and replace the fruits with exploding pine cones. Toby has its weak spots on its head and tail as well, being one of the few matchups where you do more damage by focusing the tail. This Viper Squirrel is a tricky monster like Almadron, meaning you will have to practice just to read its circular movement or turtle behind your shield in the meantime. Magnamolo and Madnamolo have mediocre water hit zones. Just target the face, arms, and tail for tenderizer damage. The flame mechanic serves to enhance your damage on ignited parts, granting an additional back hit zone. Water isn't too effective in this matchup, but of the elements, it is the most effective. Madnamolo turns off its water weakness once enhanced, making a case to use raw weapons on the angry cat. Pattern wise, the Molos are a pure test of skill for any weapon. Charge Blade punishes excessive use of wire bugs, forcing you to be patient and exploit the flaming hit zones to keep up the pressure. Puke shoots its tongue out and poison at you, both of which can be guarded. Breaking its face will cause a trip. Its entire body is a good hit zone, so line up your supers with the spine or its wingspan to zap the chameleon. While inflated, Tetranodon dashes around with the counterpeak proof belly rush. It also has a command grab and a double belly flop, which you can avoid or guard. Deflating its stomach will cause a free knockdown. Use your axe to aim for the head and belly, while thunder fouls can be dropped anywhere. During the dive, Hermitor will grab you from under a guard so be sure to space yourself a step back from where you think it will surface to avoid being command grabbed. It will trip once you break pretty much anything and when it runs out of steam. Cutting damage is abysmal on this monster so most of your damage will be coming from files. Aim for the head to crack 400 damage per file. Cyanitar will make you bleed if you tank anything claw related, but everything is reactable and more importantly, guardable. Breaking the shell or slamming down enough axe hoppers will force it to trip over the weight of its own shell. Do what Thor couldn't and go for the head. Garengolm is here by technicality. Targeting the water arm is the only reason to justify super spam with thunder. 
otherwise it's spinning axe city. It has a mixture of arm swipes, charges, and belly flops, but nothing our shield can't handle. Nargakuga is a good matchup since it tests charge blade knowledge. The dashes force you to swivel your guard, while the tail slams punish trigger happy counter peaks. Dump files from the sky or from a guard point super for optimal damage. Break the wings to trip it. Seregios gets zapped by thunder on a majority of its body, but it is highly mobile. To keep it down, you need to break its face, fingers, and legs. Don't get caught in the scooping combos and wait for your openings. Also avoid the flying blade scales. Tigrix gets fried on the face and wings. Since it will always face you, it will be easy to focus on the favorable areas. Its constant roars provide a free super each time. It combos more in Master Rank, so keep an eye for the Beyblade or Charging windup after each attack. Basil Geese punishes hyper-aggressive gameplay with its bombs. You need to watch out for landmines or your files aren't the only thing that will be popped. Also, never use Waterfall into a bomb or risk being carded. Guard Waddle through the Dive Bomb minefield until Basil lands once more. Aim for the Glowing Head and Tail, which provides generous damage for both cutting and files. Gold Rathian's main weak spot is a head post flame mode. Between the aggros and spins, you want to stay in sword and shield mode to ward off attacks. You can feasibly run spinning axe for this matchup as well, but with the caveat of lower damage output thanks to the constant flipping through the air and moving its head out of reach. Great Izuchi's roar into tail slam hits through counter peak, and the wall hang into tail slam requires some prediction to counter. Everything else is handled by ready stance and guard. Since Izuchi is pencil thin and mobile, it is favored by spinning axe, but super spam can still be used if you are precise enough with your supers. Somnicanth only has the face and its purple frill to serve as lightning rods, hence spinning axe. In between serpentine movements, it will be easier to land a spinning axe chop than a lengthy axe hopper slam. Avoid the spinning front flip and the chloroform breath using your guard and morphing advance respectively. Apex and base Mitsutsune's jank hit zones favor spinning axe for targeted gameplay. Only the claws and dorsal fins have elemental bane proccing values while the other hit zones lack elemental weakness or tenderizer proccing values. Aim for the head as usual if you just want to buzz saw away. To cause a trip, break the fingers or the frill for free openings. Avoid the water beam, backflip, and flipping tail slam via guard or morphing advance. Kushala has sub 20 on most of its thunder hit zones and its combos leave few windows of opportunity for super spam. Targeting the head will negate wind pressure for the hunt and make it a life alert patient, tripping dramatically. If you don't want to take thunder into the hunt, poison is the next best pick since the wind dragon has double the normal poison duration and damage. Lucia is identical to the base matchup but using ice instead of thunder. Aim for the wings and head for a majority of the hunt, while the tail serves as a secondary target whenever it slams its tail. It gains a Beyblade spinning move that eats through sharpness, stamina, and health. It also gains poison spike projectiles on its tail based moves after a coating animation, which can be waddled through using guard. Diablos has generous ice hit zones with a large surface area, allowing you to frost it with impunity. The only problem with the matchup is that it charges around frequently, making you chase it around. Be patient and let it charge at you, providing solid guard point practice. Break each of the horns to make it writhe in pain and provide a small opening. Otherwise, just take advantage of the lengthy roar animations for a counter peak super. Apex Diablos only has its glowing horns and tail as ice targets with everything else insulating against the cold. The same moveset as Diablos but now with Bloodbath Diablos' sliding spin and the roar into death charge combo. Counter peak is dead against these moves so guard and pray to Latrion, it won't snipe your ankle behind your shield. Espinas needs to be enraged to be frostbitten, which it says during a majority of the fight. You get a free wake up slap at the start of the fight, so load up on shield charge and files using the fodder monsters like Bulfango to chop the green dragon awake with an axe hopper. Guard the ailment lace fireballs and triple charges turning 180 degrees after each pass. Aim for the head and the stomach with your supers. The Rajangs are here by virtue of being too mobile for spinning axe. It won't grant any time to buzz out away at its face despite having favorable hit zones for spinning axe. You will have to settle for the sub 20 hit zone damage for super spam. Think of Rajang as a turn based game and the matchup becomes easier. Wait for it to attack, 
Then based on the opening, use a super or a sword and shield combo. Then get out of range of its follow up. Guard the command grabs, slimes, and sonic spin. Furious Rashing has a spinning charge which requires you to guard, turn, and then guard again. Seething Basil Geese is identical to the base matchup, but with ice as its weakness and more explosions. Aim for the glowing head and tail. It gains a TNT version of the air raid, so guard any nearby glowing bombs while keeping an eye on when seething dive bombs. It also gains a supernova-esque attack, which also can be blocked. Just don't hunker down with a bomb at your butt. Apex Zenogre is one of the hardest charge blade matchups. If you input a super at the wrong time, you will cart for it. Wait for its full combos to finish before attempting a counter, otherwise just turtle behind your shield. Aim for the arms when they glow red, break them to gain the trip and access to its back. Mind the lightning attack since they will thunder blight you and increase stun chances for a free cart. Great Roggy is just poison great baggy. You can technically just ignore the poison and slash its face. The same logic for the grades apply, having pencil thin bodies and a constant need to body check makes angling supers a nightmare. Aim for the face and break it to negate the poison. Bishotin's only hit zones are the head and tail, so target those. There are plenty of moves to watch out for, namely the spinning charge, the flash bomb fruit, and the paralysis fruit. Everything is reactable with the ready stance or counter peak so long as you know it's coming. While it's standing on its tail, slash it to aim for a knockdown. Bazarios needs to be glowing to be formally weak to dragon, otherwise its hit zones will be sub 20. Guard the Chuck Norris swim and the gas explosions. Break the back with axe hopper and the chest using a barrel bomb. This is one of the worst matchups for a spinning axe, so your alternative is to use impact file. Apex and base Rathen will spam tail flips, which discourage guard point supers until after the third flip. Apex will juice up base Rathian's fireballs with AoEs, so guard even if you think you're out of range. The poison clumps will inflict venom, which saps HP much faster but will last half as long as regular poison. There isn't a single bad hit zone for a super spam on either form, so just line them up to ensure you land every file. Apex and Base Rathlos are similar to the Rathians whilst grounded, but they will stay airborne with a few unique moves like the Double Flame Breath and Talon Strike. Axe Hopper can be used to knock it out of the sky using strictly an AED, otherwise dump supers on any part of its body while it treads the earth. Base Rathlos will get sniped out of the air with a flash bomb, while Apex needs its fingers to be snapped to drop. Malzino borrows its wing attacks from Valstrax and Tail Stab from Magnamalo. The unique moves are the Blood Blades and the Teleporting, which are telegraphed enough to be able to guard on reaction. It also has a command grab that sucks your life force while boosting its own power. It leaves a number of openings so pump files into its face and arms to knock it out of its enhanced state. Narwa, Ibushi, and All Mother are effectively the same monster in terms of hit zones and body skeleton. You wait until they get close to the ground before you pop an axe hopper dunk bash their face in or tail, regardless of being grounded or not, while kicking Narwa's stomach when it falls down. Avoid Narwa's thunder projectiles, Ibushi's breath attacks, and All Mother's fuse moveset featuring Dragonator spikes. Tail slimes and Dragonators will cart sub full health, while everything else is survivable. Counter peak is garbage in this matchup since most moves have a follow up shockwave, making Axe Hopper the de facto silk bind in this matchup. Geismagorm is a walking dragon hit zone, just don't pump files on this monster's back. It hugs the ground with its acantar sized body, so staying by its feet is an acceptable yet cowardly strategy. The only thing that is capable of one-shotting you is the death laser after the gunning section. Run like hell to get outside of the circle or you will cart. Overall, the fight is straightforward since it isn't very mobile and you can just drop files like it's hot. Using Gormagala to kill Shigaru Magala is a bit of irony, so that will be my recommendation in terms of weapons. Shigaru's only hit zones for Dragon are the head and the wing claws. Unless the monster is down, consistent super spam needs perfect positioning, hence spinning axe. Guard the charges, beams, and plague double nukes. When it ascends to roar, that's a free counter peek and reload on files. Baroth toggles between fire and water as its weakness, invalidating one element while enabling the other. Since the hit zones are also terrible, 
Impact file ignoring Barath's shit zones will be the optimal route. Otherwise you would just be focusing the hands and tail. Counterpeak the steam charge attack for a free file recharge, otherwise just pop your guard point supers. Jira Totus toggles between thunder and water as its weakness with its head and tail elevated out of reach from the quote unquote tall super files. Breaking muddy parts will knock it out of the water mid dive. Axe Hopper will let you line up your supers, just don't get caught by its double tail spin. Practice reacting to its roars mid dive since they lack any noticeable wind up. Rachna Kadaki's best hit zone is the head, which is always tucked out of range until you get a KO or break enough webbing, which has no ice resistance. Tenderizer and Element are both dead against this matchup for a majority of the fight, so ignoring hit zones with impact files is the go-to strategy. The Flame Slide will cart you through guard up level 1 and through your health using guard up level 2. You need guard up level 3 to stop it fully. Shield yourself against the slams and the flamethrower moves as well. Zenogre keeps its best hit zones out of range, which are the head for cutting and the back for ice. The only way to access them is during a trip or an axe hopper. Between the flippant darting around, the quick combos and the flips, mastering Zenogre is a rough matchup. You can't really force a trip since its exposed hit zones are tough as nails and you need to stop it from charging up or zapping you in the process. Try breaking its hands to get the trip, otherwise dump your impact files. Despite Teostra having a hit zone of 20 on its head, landing it on any other body part will actively punish you, which is why I placed this in impact file. Teostra has its two modes, blast and fire. Blast produces a bunch of clouds clogging up the screen before detonating. Fire mode causes roasting if you get too close, and after a set amount of time, Teostra pops a supernova which can't be blocked safely. You have to use Morphing Advance away from Teostra's Sphere of Death. Breaking its goat horns will turn it into a life alert patient tripping at every opportunity. Valstrax turns off all elemental weaknesses once in Rage. Despite its generous initial elemental hit zones, it will only be active when the Rocket Dragon isn't glowing. Hence, the impact file placement. It is a taller monster meaning the good hit zones are out of reach for spinning axe, favoring super spam. Guard up 3 is mandatory, otherwise you will cart against the Kamehameha beam and ambush through your 700 defense guards. Most attacks come in 2s, so follow up after every second attack. Astalos is the only monster in the game with good cutting hit zones but poor body wide elemental hit zones. You can use ice against it thanks to the 15 ice hit zones but it can't be placed in the ice category for not cracking 20 on any of its hit zones. The glowing parts become targets, otherwise hit the head. All of its moves can be guarded, but it performs a lot of combos punishing poorly timed super inputs, hence spinning axe. Ready Stance enables you to bulldoze through attacks while hacking away at its sparkling targets. There isn't a single bad matchup for charge blade, but you are forced to change how you play based on the monster you are hunting. It's all part of the jack of all trades design for the weapon, which means you can't stick to one playstyle without hitting roadblocks. It pays to learn how to use and build for both playstyles. Also guards handle most attacks without issue. Like if this video was helpful to you, consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Comment down below any topic or question you have. That's all I got for this one, Greedy Knight, signing out.